Hi everyone and welcome to the eighth and last part of uh, getting started, no, our first steps in Opus Modus course. I don't even know the name of my own course. Um, in this video we're going to finish the, the score that we started um, three videos ago and we're going to talk about the dev score which um, is a nice way to organize your score. We're also going to take a look at some methods to play your score in different programs such as uh, Logic Pro or any, any DAW or uh, MuseScore or anything like that. Before I do that though, I uh, quickly want to revisit the init seat at the top here. As you might recall, a lot of functions in Opus Modus by default um, generate different output every time you evaluate. For example, if we take a look at the length divide function here, we can see that one of the keywords is seed, and it says that the seed is uh, by default nil. And this is the case for all functions that have a seed parameter. And what this means is that if I evaluate my length divide here, you can see that every time I press command E, the output will be a little bit different. Or maybe it's a little bit difficult to see, but you should you should see it changing. Now, if you don't want that, uh, what you can do is you uh, would put the keyword seat here and you give it an arbitrary value. And that way, every time you evaluate, it will um, be exactly the same. So sometimes you want to do this. And for a function, you want to leave some functions free and the other one you want to fix. In our score, we didn't do this. We actually didn't set any seed parameter, I think, for none of the functions. So this means that everything will be slightly different every time we evaluate, except we have this init seat at the top. So before, because we were using the preview score, we were um, evaluating everything line by line. But when we evaluate the score, um, when we use the dev score structure, often we use uh, evaluate score on the right click menu here, or you use the key command option command one on Mac. And in this case, it will evaluate everything in the file at the same time. And the init seat will be used for all the functions that have a seat. So it will actually be fixed always to this number right here. Now, that is maybe not ideal. Of course, what we can do is we can change this number to an arbitrary different number, and then the score will sound different. But what we might want to set up is a system where every time we evaluate the whole score, it will sound different, but we can see which seed we were using at the time we were listening to it, so that we can go back to that version that we perhaps liked. So to do this, um, it's very easy. We can use the uh, random random number uh, function in Opus Modus, which takes um, the number of random numbers that you want, the amount of random numbers that you want, which in my case is just one, and then uh, the range. So I can say one up until, let's say, 99999, nine, 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 nine. why not? Um, then we can close this, and if we evaluate this, we can see that every time we hit Command E, we get a different random number. So now, if we set this equal to a variable, and then we put that variable in the init seed, if I evaluate the score, I will see this value being printed. And then I know uh, which random number that was chosen uh, will be the version that I'm listening to. This might be slightly confusing right now. We'll revisit this in, uh, in a little bit, and it might make more sense then. So first, uh, another thing I want to do is do a little bit more uh, cleanup and restructuring. Um, we can outline some of these things a little bit uh, prettier. Um, another thing I noticed is that for our vector to velocity here, we set a range of 0 0.32 to 0 0.48. Um, I found that a little bit of a lower velocities works better. So I'm going to change this to 2.8 to 3.9 so that um, the left hand will be slightly softer. And also, um, Maybe you remember what we did here with the do section. We have um, a random pick where we randomly pick between these two articulations and we apply that to specific bars. And those bars are set with the articulation left sections, which is this variable here. And basically for a zero, um, we don't want to have a, um, an articulation. And for a one, we want to randomly pick between one of these two. One of these two. I found that um, I had a little bit too many articulations, so what I can do is I can lower the, the weight of the, um, of the ones in the output, setting it to 7, for example, um, so that we get more bars where nothing will happen. So, so we only sometimes get, a, um, get an articulation there. If I now evaluate this function, we can see that some of the bars have staccato or they have marcato, but most of them are unaffected by the articulations. 
So we have that. Um, and I think if we then clean up this a little bit, one thing we need to do still is we need an outro for our piece. Um, so far we have an A, a B and a C section, um, but it might be nice to have sort of a nice outro. And I actually, I might say I cheated a little bit, although I don't think it is cheating, but I uh, made something, um, I made something earlier and I'm just gonna paste it in here. And that's this piece of code right here. And this is just to, to write some sort of ending part. Um, the reason I'm using Opus Modus Notation here is because I knew already what I wanted the output to sound like. And then sometimes it's just easier to write it out. This is one reason, but a more important one is because it allows me to talk about uh, the difference between using this approach with all the functions and just writing it out. And especially people new to the software, they often, they're used to this kind of working where you just write the notes that you want, you know what you want to write, you have something in your head or you were playing piano and you came up with something. And I just want to let you know that this is completely fine. We don't have to use this approach right away. We don't have to make everything algorithmic or uh, generative. Um, it, we're, very, we're very welcome to write our own pieces as well. It can be very fast. For me, this way of writing um, everything in uh, with, the, with the durations and the, and the velocities and the notes themselves is, is much quicker than working in a, in a score editor. And um, both, both methods are completely uh, valid. We, we can use both. We can, you, you can start a piece only writing opus modus notation and maybe in the beginning you start to slowly use some functions like some pitch transpose or maybe a length divide. You start with something simple and um, mostly you can just work with sort of manually written stuff because it takes a time to get used to all of these functions. So yeah, so sort of a long monologue there, but um, I just wanted to, <laughs> to point that out that it's fine to use this notation. So anyway, we have that. Now we have our whole piece and um, the next thing we want to do is talk about def score. So, so far we were using preview score, which as I mentioned, is a quick method to preview what you have, to listen to uh, what you have at the moment. But once you're ready to sort of finish your score, usually you would use a def score structure. So the def score is, um, we can think of it as a function, although technically it's a macro, but you shouldn't be concerned about that. Uh, it's just a Lisp kind of thingy. But basically, this is what you put at the end of the score to combine everything together and to set up how your score looks and um, where you perhaps want to send the MIDI uh, from the score, etc. So you can send it to some, somewhere else. Um, so some of the things here are going to be similar to a previous score, but um, slightly different. So the first thing it takes is, um, well, the name of the, of the function, I guess. I'm going to be on original, uh, i call this first steps tutorial or let's do piano and then after that uh, we open a list and we can add things such as the name the title the composer the time signature etc uh, so let's just start with the key signature which in my case we do some modulations i think we start in d and then we go to c um, very often i just go with chromatic so that i see my sharps and flats right in the score if you don't want that you can do something like c minor or major or anything like that but I will go with chromatic for now. Then we have a title. Um, I again don't have a very good option here. First, uh, first steps, piano. I'll just call it the same as the function. Then we could do a subtitle if you want to be fancy. Um, I don't know, score for 10 fingers. Oh, and a piano, I guess. And a piano. Uh, then we have the composer, which is me. And the order here doesn't matter, by the way, you can, you can put them in any order. Um, then we have a time signature. Now for the time signature, we need to think a little bit because we started out in this uh, sort of 4-4 four, four notation. Remember, we used the OMN to time signature there. And then for this B section, we were using a 2-4 kind of thing. Uh, this, this motif uh, is like two quarter notes long. And then for the C section, we have, uh, I think, 3, 4, 3, 8, something like this. So because we, we were careful about um, how we were going to use our sublists, which, um, as we mentioned, often uh, refers to the bar, we can actually simply fetch the time signature from one of our sections. So if we evaluate left here, actually, I see I forgot something. What I need to do here is in my assemble seek, 
I need to add my new sections there as well. So let's do left uh, D and left E. And here we have right D and right E. So now within these variables, we have the whole score. And if we evaluate them, this is basically everything that we have from the intro all the way to the outro there. Um, this is all the, all the material. So with this, we can actually get our um, time signature. So the function for that is simply called get time signature. And we can just give it a, a sequence. So we can just give it left, for example, and then um, it will check what the time signature is and it will give us a list for how long that um, a time signature stays. So for example, we have 4-4 four, four for eight bars. We have 2-4 for 32 bars, that's correct. Uh, we have 3, 8 for 61 bars and then one extra bar of uh, 6, 4 there. So we can simply set this true to a variable, um, which very often is called TS list, time signature list. And we can then put that in here so that our dev score knows which time signatures we want to use. Now then we get to the tempo. And for the tempo, we were also trying to be a little bit fancy. And we had this uh, similar looking list where we have, okay, we have 60 BPM for 8 bars, 90 for 32, etc. So in our case, we can just copy this and put this in here um, because we actually we don't need the preview score anymore. So we can simply remove this. So we have that. And then um, within this block, we have the layout as well, which is uh, not mandatory. You can leave it out, but it's a nice way to say uh, which, which clefs you want. Like you really want a bass clef, a viola or a treble or whatever. Um, in our case, we actually have a template that we can use, um, which is called the piano layout. So this will just be a bass and a treble clef. And in there, you can um, specify the names that you will specify later on. I will show that in a second. So I will say piano left hand here. Now from here, I can close this list. And you can see that I'm closing it up until there, but I'm, not, I'm still inside the dev score function. So then below here, what we can do is we can um, recall that name. So I can say piano right hand here. And then I give it the OMN that we want to use, which um, in our case is right. So that's basically this here. This is everything. Um, and then we can give it a channel and we can give it a port. So these ports, they refer to MIDI ports. And if you never messed with the, if you're on Mac and you never messed with the MIDI ports, then you can just use one or two or whatever. Um, I think you have two available by default. I'm not quite sure. Um, this you can find in your IAC driver. If you go to um, audio MIDI setup, um, you can find that. I won't do that right now because I don't want to make this a Mac specific tutorial. Um, but long story short, I actually named the ports on my Mac. And I have one which is called Opus Modus 1. So I'm going to send this to that port. And later you can see that uh, within Logic, I can actually find that port and open it and accept MIDI input from that. So that's our right hand. And then we have our left hand piano, which has OMN left. Um, channel 2, here I should add a 1. And since I already set the port here, I don't have to do it here. It will go to the default port. So now, just to show you the structure, we have this block here with sort of the extra information of the score. And then below that, we have our actual assignments where we say, okay, the piano right hand is going to be um, this, this sequence of notes. And then we have the left hand here. And now after this, we can actually close the whole dev score block. So that is a very uh, simple, basic example of a dev score. If you go through the document here, you can see there's many options we can choose from. Um, we see some examples here. Here's a simple example, one that doesn't use a layout. So it simply has the title, the key signature, time, and the tempo. And then it just calls this arbitrary instrument. And it has some options here. So here you can see this OMN, which is the actual material, the channel. In this case, they choose a sound, general MIDI, and then they choose a program. This is a way to choose a different piano, for example. Um, this is very similar to what you would do in preview score as well. So because I don't want to use the built-in, Mac has built-in MIDI functionality, um, it's called general MIDI. I don't want to use that. I want to send this to Logic, and that's why I'm using this port right here. So now, let's see. Um, everything looks all right. We have our seat here. Let's. Um, I'm going to evaluate this once and then cancel it right away to show you something. So evaluate the whole score with option command one.
okay and we start to hear it and then if i scroll up here this is all the things that get evaluated and you can see that for all the for all the functions that have a seat it will actually print the seat here to your listener so that you know which version it had so if you really like the output of gen weight you can go back you copy this number and you put it in your gen weight function uh, that will be this one here so you just add your seat there and then uh, <laughs> i didn't copy it uh, so we copy this number and we put it in there so now that this will always be fixed to the last output. Um, I didn't want to do that though. What I wanted to do was go back to the beginning here. And here we can see the init seed. And this is what we set all the way at the top there. So the random function there, it also outputs the seeds. This is a little bit confusing because the, in the random function, you can see in the documents that this also has a seed value. So this will be printed here, but that's this, that's, if you set this seed here, it will always um, choose the same number. So I don't want that. I want to look at the second number. So if I like the score that I have, I can copy this one and I can put it in here. And then um, I always have that same version again. So I will randomize it for now, but you can then add a comment and say, oh, this was a nice version. Or um, I do this sometimes multiple times. I, I, I write a comment where I say, this one sounded nice. And then I add the, the seed to that so that later I can sort of scroll through my favorite versions. It's a little bit more of a more of a pro trick. Um, but it's nice, it's nice to know about. All right, so now let's actually um, listen to the piece. And we should hear that we have much uh, nicer sound. And that is because we have everything in logic. Um, I can actually switch to logic for a second. Oh, you know what? I, I will play the score and then I will switch to logic. So you can see that I'm, I'm not lying about this. So um, that's our intro. Let's go to this uh, middle section here. Um, and then and let's start just before the C section and then we'll listen until the end of the piece. Um, and then I'll show you some more things after. Right, so that's the whole piece. Um, this is the outro that I wrote manually, these last, um, I don't know how many bars, so starting at uh, 71. And um, well, you can hear that we use a different piano sound than the rest of the series. So uh, let's uh, switch to Logic real quick and uh, see what's happening there. 
So in Logic, I have two channels here, one for the uh, right hand and one for the left hand. I have a custom piano that, or it's not a custom piano, I just have a VST that I'm using um, from Arturia, this one is. And I can add some reverb, I have a send to a bus, I can do some stuff on the on the master as well. So with this we can we can really start to um, yeah, work on our own sound. And we can also actually just record it. If I press record here and then switch back to Opus Modus, and I play from here. Right, so that's one way to record in Logic right away. And then, of course, you can um, see all your notes and you can edit everything. Um, you have everything separate right now. Now, um, to receive the MIDI, um, this is, will be specific per DAW, but in Logic, what you do is you open the track parameters and you first set the port. So you have these ISC drive. These are all the MIDI ports uh, coming in. So I have this ISC drive for Opus Modus 1. This is the port I created myself. And then I set the channel to 1. And for this one, I've set the channel to 2 so that they're both um, separated. Now, of course, you could add many more instruments to this and start recording those as well. Um, one, one thing that you could do, for example, is, I mean, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but let's, let's very quickly show you. If I say here something like baseline, um, and then I use one of the, for, for easiness, let's do, um, let's take a pitch melodize function, pitch melodize. Um, which takes chords and then starts to melodize them. And then I can call this on left A, for example. And I can evaluate that. So now we get only single notes in there. I can then um, transpose this down, let's say minus 12. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so we could say that's sort of a bass line. Now, in this case, since we have now three instruments here, um, I would add an instrument here. So I would call this bass, for example, and the OMN would be bass line. And then I can set the channel to three for this one. And then um, I shouldn't use a piano layout for this because now we have a three instrument score. So instead, what we can do is um, call this um, sort of template called uh, bracket group. I'm gonna re bracket group. I'm gonna remove this, and this should be inside a list. So we have a list, and then we have a bracket group, and in there we can say which um, staffs we want. So a treble layout could be for the. Um, this would be for the right hand piano, right hand. Then we have a bass layout, bass clef um, for the piano, left hand. And then we have another bass layout for the, uh, what did we call it? Bass, I guess. So this is the name we see here, yeah, bass. All right. Um, and then we can close this list here as well. We could um, give it the name here as well. That name will show up in the, in the score. So uh, we call this right hand, uh, right hand name. Uh, left hand, a little bit prettier, and um, just bass. All right, uh, let's see if we can evaluate this and see in logic if that will also work. Here we have a bass because it's listening to channel three. It's just a synth in this case. Doesn't sound so great right now, but that's how you would uh, how you would go about that. I will remove this for now because we were going to work on a piano score. Um, I will leave this as a bracket group though because it's kind of a 
a flexible thing and I will put this right there to make it a little bit cleaner and then remove this here and usually I keep my parentheses there um, at the end for the sake of clarity I could also add the same port here even though as I mentioned this is not necessary but maybe it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, so this is how we how we deal with um, with sending stuff to a DAW. It's it's just one example, and it's not the, um, there's different ways. For example, another thing you could do is you could use a function which is called compile score, compile score as such, and um, you have to specify the name here. So we called it first steps piano. Um, and then um, you can say what you want to output. So let's actually take a look at the documentation here. Um, so we can output a MIDI file, a score, or music XML. Um, in my case, I will go with music XML. Um, and then we give that a file name as well. File is um, tutorial piano, something like this. So now if we if we evaluate this line, it will put a score in the media folder um, with that name. So uh, tutorial piano it is. And I can now right click, show in Finder. So now I can see this score and I can open this in any of my editors, such as MuseScore, for example. And then we see that we get our whole score here um, neatly in uh, MuseScore. I could Similarly, also open this in uh, Logic, for example, this music XML file, but there's also a way to directly open it in Logic. Um, there's another function called music XML to editor. And um, this one again takes a, a file name, I will call it example score. And um, then the default editor, I believe is MuseScore as well. Uh, yeah, MuseScore 4. So if I evaluate this by itself, it should also open MuseScore, which is already open right now. It will just open it uh, new. I will not save that. I will also close this <laughs> and this. Thank you, MuseScore. But we can also add another app. So I could say, for example, I can call the identifier here and I can say uh, it's a string um, com.apple.logic10 for logic10 and this is the bundle identifier in case you want to look for that if I do this um, logic will open and will ask uh, do you want to close this I say no don't close then it says import from music xml file then I okay and then uh, it puts my whole score in here as well including my new baseline so with this, of course, um, you get all your tempos, you get all your velocities, and you could now start editing your score. You could start adding layers to it. Um, there's a lot of different options there. Now, at this point, we, we have sort of reached the point from where there are multiple other tutorials you could get into. So I really wanted to create this first steps in Opus Modus um, series because um, in the videos that I recorded up until this point, we often started a little bit further in the process. Things were already a little bit more um, advanced. So now that you have this, you can actually start watching the other videos because there's quite a lot of examples where I show how to use Opus Modus in the context of Logic and how to make more electronic music with it. So this means doing your sound design in Logic, but doing the score part in, in Opus Modus, um, or even doing the sound part in Opus Modus as well using Super Collider. But hopefully this gives you a very strong foundation to start enjoying Opus Modus the way I do. One very last thing um, I wanna show you, I will remove this line because this, so, so remember you don't need this. I just wanna show you this so that you know that it's there but with this we can make a music xml or midi file and we can just open that in any in any edit editor right away um, one other thing i do want to show you though so i'll comment this line is if i right click here and i say uh, p print it stands for pretty print i can um, do that for the last score and then what you'll get in your listener here is the complete score as it would be if it was handwritten so you can see that everything is written out. This is the bar number, and it's all living already in a dev score. Let's, let's copy this whole thing, and then let's take a look at it in a regular editor. Whoop, something like this. We copy it. Um, I already have an empty file here. So 
so I can just paste this in here. And this is the whole score. This is what we made. So if you maybe this is a good way to back up your score because we're uh, we are not using any functions in here. It's just raw notation. So it's it's very clean. Um, and if you are ever revisiting an old score like this, you might get confused about what exactly you were doing to generate this. Um, but you don't need that. You can you can pretty print the score and then you see it like this. And it's a very easy way to back it up as well. And if you play back this file, so right click, let's do MIDI player, why not? Um, it sounds exactly the same. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this series and you learned a lot. If you have any questions, I would um, direct you to the Opus Modus uh, forum, just to do a Google search on Opus Modus. And this is where you can ask your questions and a lot of people will um, answer to you right away. Um, otherwise, you can always ask uh, questions in the, in the video here as, the, as a comment as well. So um, thank you for watching. Please uh, feel free to follow us. It's very helpful and to like the video. And um, I will see you in some other video.